Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you all have a good weekend ahead of you. Um, let's see. I did get the little um, XY table, $30 off Amazon Prime. Out of the box, it is usable, uh, even though you see a lot of reviews on it. On YouTube, showing it is complete junk. Uh, it doesn't. It wasn't like this when I got it, so I remachined just about every little piece of it, including the dovetails on the mill. So if anybody has any questions on it, let me know. I can do a full-on review and show what I did. The lead screws. There's nothing fancy. They're eight millimeters by 1.25 uh, millimeter pitch. So I remade the whole center, but. The um, saga on making the engine here continues, I guess. Uh, I like comments, no matter what they are, but um, all the comments, I guess, in the voiceover were great. Thank you. Um, so I'm probably going to do more. I kind of liked it myself. Uh, on the previous video, the first one, making the engine, the flame engine, being called a condescending asshole, kind of like, okay. <laughs> So I went back and I looked at the video, and yeah, I kind of dogged the prints a lot, but I'm an engineer, and I expect when you download something that I just took it for granted, they were correct, and I was, you know, corrected by some people uh, saying, yeah, okay. So I still have video footage, building more of it, and I'll show that, but first I'll take you over to the bench, show you what I have so far, and show you where I'm going to go. Okay, this is what I have so far. It's coming along, I think, pretty nice, but it's quite a bit of work in this. I did show um, making these guys, and I wasn't too clear in that video, in the opening of it, that, because uh, this is the test piece that I was playing with, and yeah, I came down and it rotated in uh, thread protector, but the issue was on the mill, it's such a small bit, you can't feel when it really touches, you can't feel the forces because the mill, many mill head is so big and so on. So it's really easy to break a bit and I need to go even smaller. So that was the issue. So when I get the XY table, I'll show some stuff and try to experiment with making these, finishing these guys off for a spanner, which I think will look good. This guy, when I was machining it, uh, I mean, this whole project is fantastic because it's a big time learning curve, challenge, everything. Um, to finish this guy off, all of a sudden, you know, I was having a problem trying to clamp it, and I figured, oh, just put it in your little vise and then clamp this down to the rotary table and you can easily do this and the other side so rebuilding this is going to be quick and not a problem to do uh... what else is there okay so for this guy uh, the next thing i figured okay let me just try making the flywheel and i had bought seven dollars a slug of steel and I'll show a little bit of machining this but this was yeah come on I'm not gonna do this I needed the weight I'm too cheap to go out and buy a nice piece of brass which I should have done in the first place and it's really hard to get a nice finish on this so I'm still practicing and playing with that I think I've got it figured out but so I gonna this kinda nice it's real flat and here I can use this on the granite surface for something I don't know that was a seven dollar chunk of steel from industrial metal supply so I gave that up and then I had bought stainless because the next thing up was the cylinders and this was one piece and yeah the wind horizontal pan saw just goes right through it pretty clean which side yeah that was the side because that's yellow so this is the cut side. Done a nice job. Took it about five minutes to go through it. Didn't dull uh, the blade at all. I was scared about that. Uh, I was using anchor lube a little bit, you know, kind of for whatever it's worth. But then I started turning this, and it was nice. And I'll show a little bit of this. 
But the problem with this, I was saying, oh, I'm going to love this. I'm going to start using it. It's like, no. <laughs> this is fun stuff to turn, but when you start turning it, it just keeps coming off in one continuous strand. So I need something with a chip breaker. Because this was like, you go one slice and it's all piled up, around, wrapped around a chuck. You try to grab it and you slice your fingers to death. So I'm not going to do that. So what I'm thinking about now is I went back and searched for just something really simple. And there was uh, one YouTube video, a single cylinder. Is there a pic I don't think there's a picture of it in here. Might be. Yeah, you'll recognize that if you see the video. So I just want to make something really um, simple. And I'm going to make the whole thing out of aluminum. I think this was aluminum. I didn't double check it. But it's interesting because he did say, you know, it's available in a 1950, February 1950 popular science. And it's a kick because that particular issue you can buy by itself off eBay for $10. But I managed to find it on um, the internet. It's embedded in an iframe, so you can't print it out. But I figured out, uh, being IT, yeah, I'm going to capture it. So I'm going to try building this guy. And again, you start looking at it going, all right, the dimensions are wrong. Where is it? It's this piece. This took me a long time because I figured if I can't figure out how to do a cam, why even bother starting? So. Um, yeah, the comment was left. Beautiful comment by Pierre. Always check the prints before you even start machining. So I started checking stuff going, yeah, they're missing some stuff. No big deal. They've got 1164ths here. Should be 1 and 1164ths. But I was looking at how they're doing this. You take a disc, you measure offset, drill a hole, mount a 1.5 inch disc there, stick the whole thing in the lathe and start spinning it until you get 1 and 11 sixteenths here. I did that, but boy is it so out of balance the whole lathe is boom, boom, boom. You had to go so slow you could count the revolutions on it. So finally I put my engineering hat on and said come on. And um, came up with my own method for doing it. Real easy. Just was a proof of concept here. And I'll show you my idea on how I did it real easy with a rotary table. So um, I guess bottom line is I'm shelving the other engine just for now. And I'm going to try building this guy. Looks like there's enough of information here. This will, They did a cast for this in the base. But I'm going to, because this is one and three quarter, I'm just going to make this out of aluminum. I'm going to get the flywheel, a nice piece of brass, machine that up, spend the bucks, don't be so cheap, and crank this guy out, and hopefully I can get something running to show you guys. So, stay tuned. Truth here, let's see how it came out, man. It's a really nice looking hole, all nice and shiny. Of course, there's oil all over it, but... Alright, one bearing. Boom, right in there. Yeah, it falls out. This is a little bit sloppier, but I can use Loctite or whatever. Eh, I could put a bearing in each. Where's another one? Are the bearings are all that precise? This is the same. No, it's a smaller hole. I wonder what that one is. Yeah, that one's going to fit snug. Okay, got to push it out. So. No, that is the same size. Wow, so they don't have that great a tolerance on these bearings. Look at that. Nice. So much so I could probably put a bearing on each side if I want. Yeah, that's going to fall out. It's going to have to get loctited. I don't know how why that came out. This one is like nice and snug. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it's play in the in the bearing hole, but that's going to be fun to turn a shaft like that. Let me just pop this guy in there for fun, huh? I should have more of the. Oh yeah, see, look, he's tight. 
he's tight in that hole. This hole, for some reason, came out a little sloppier, but... Oh, well. Is the other side the same? Yeah, both sides are the same. Is that hot or not? <laughs> that is crazy. Nice. Loctite or something. I'll hold that in place. So, onward and upward. This guy goes on here this way. So, ready for the next piece. And it'll be fun to get the flywheel done, too. Oh, just starting to attack this guy. <laughs> and this is the first time I've used die cam <laughs> to get the layout. So, um, kind of weird, scary. Clamp it in the vise right there. <laughs> Just kind of plunge dive to remove a lot of the material here with an end mill. And then in, back and forth. I need to, see I'm going to make a scribe because I'm using an X-Acto knife to draw the lines. Um, so I need to put this back in. I need to really actually touch the lines and touch the circle here. Then I figure I'll center up the rotary table and clamp the, I gotta drill holes first, so I'll drill the center holes here so I can relocate them. Clamp this up, get the hole on center and then come out the .472 and just start rotating the table. So that should give me the two circles there. Then eventually, yeah, because I gotta clamp it square, so I'll drill the two holes that go in the bottom. And then I gotta some hold it in the vise 10 degrees and fly cut the whole face here. So I think it's doable. Um, I'm gonna have to elongate these holes before I do the angle because I'll never be able to hold this in the vise again. So let's see how it comes out. Alright, just show you kind of how I do this. It's not necessarily how it should be done, but get the rotary table out here. A long time ago I saw somebody took a bar and just mounted it on that. I thought that was a great idea. Because it makes putting it in there a lot quicker than removing the vise and recentering everything. So all right, I have clearance. It's in there. Where's the dial? Speed knob here. Clamp it down. We have about on center with the vise. So it's in there. Now it's just a matter of using the edge finder to find the center of this hole here. So I go up higher. Yep. Edge finder. Lock that down. So this is where I really love DROs. Because it makes doing this job real easy. So, alright. So I just got to find that. That'll be on center and I'll bring you back. Kind of a Rube Goldberg for clamping. Especially using my squares. But that's all I had. But as you can see, I'm right on center with the gauge pin. So I'm just, because I can't clamp here so I could do the entire revolution. So I'm just going to have to do like half at a time and then move the clamp over and do the other half. So it's just a matter of putting the end mill now in and rotating it. Let's see how it comes out. Well, it worked. <laughs> Unfortunately, I went a little too far. I took a little nick out of my square, but there's a nice round edge and it all matched in. I uh, also forgot I gotta clamp this thing because I had to do the bevel first because I after I do the two rounds there's no way I can clamp this to get a 10 degree bevel or champ yeah bevel chamfer on it so I gotta tear it all down and start all over this will remove the shield so you can see it it's mounted in there at 10 degrees Fly cutters moved out, our cams are low because it's going to be too much vibration with it being off balance, but ships are flying all over the place. But pretty 
pretty close to being done. Finish is coming out really nice. But I need to put the shield back up. I'm getting scattered with this stuff. Alright. Should thinking I should show a little bit more machining or setups. Making the main base plate, this is what everything mounts on. Problem is, I don't have the travel and the Y axis. Um, so, this is the trick I do. Well, this guy was all just stood up between uh, mini pallets. I've got the two mini pallets to give it some strength and just mill it down so it's easy. But what I do to trim that off is that I take my highest parallels, stick them in there. And I take the smaller mini pallet that I've got the print for up on the website. I don't know where I want to put this in. I want to put it in this way, I think. Is that going in? Alright, getting him about on center of the vise. Hold him down, clamp it. Alright. Next, I'm going to be doing it on this back edge here. I'm quite a bit off center of the vise, so shift him over. There. Now he's more on center with the vise. And let me use a square. A lot of people are asking what that's for, because that was machined with this, and it gives me a square edge. To square things up on. Oh, I need to get my clamps in here. Alright, he's gonna go here, so I want to clamp out towards the end that I'm going to machine. And where's the Allen wrench for this guy? There he is. Alright. I'm gonna turn some light on. What the heck? <laughs> Makes everything nice and yellow in the video. Alright. Why is he blinding? Alright, so take it down. Alright, snug. Alright, so I square him up. Square him up. Take him all the way back, almost to the edge. Hold it all. And clamp it down. So that's generally how I do it, because then I'm just going to put an end mill in there, and then I'll do the this guy for doing the chamfer. There's him. Oh, that needs to be higher up. There. Actually, is that it? Yeah. Just swing it around. You can see if it clears that, then, or just close to clearing it, then it's the right height. Alright, just tighten them down. And I'm ready to just face mill this guy off. So that's how I do it, guys. Thought I'd show you guys turning the flywheel. 1018, a little piece of metal in there. Tape turning steel. Oh, yes. Alright. It's a little hot. Kind of a different angle here. Put the camera in the vise on the mill. <coughs> I was rather reluctant to turn um, stainless, but this is the cutter that I showed I got at that vintage show. And I am using Anchor Lube here since they say they're the best on these exotic metals. So, but this thing seems to be just cutting it without any problems here. 
It's just coming right off. Seem like it's a big deal. It's like, wow, the finish is pretty nice. So I have a feeling I'm going to be working with stainless a lot more here in time to come. Taking just 2000s cuts. I don't want to push the machine. This is the newer leg anyway. It's still kind of getting broken in. This gutter seems to be doing um, 1018 also really well. Look at that, boom, 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 boom. It's flying all over the place though. And it seems to be a pretty nice finish too. Like, wow, that's sweet, all right.